Brendan Collis came into the studio along with Peter Blexley, who's the uh, former member of Scotland Yard's undercover unit. And I asked Brendan how surprised he was that someone was caught by his trap so quickly. It was astounding. I mean, we uh, joined this group and within minutes, he was uh, sending a friend's request. And as soon as we accepted that, he was messaging. And then within a week, he'd met the girl. That was it. The thing is, when he first realised that it was a bit of a setup, mm -hmm. he then talked to the other profile, yeah. which you were also yeah. managing, about killing himself. What he did you think was? Then? The heart dropped, obviously. We don't want anybody to hurt themselves. Uh, the nature of the crime, a lot of people probably would want that, but it's not what we wanted. So we did our best to try and console him and, you know, and see what happened to calm him down. But when this did happen, mm. did you ever at any point think you might be getting out of your depth? Oh, yeah, of course. Be because nobody... I don't want that on my conscience. I don't want somebody committing suicide on my conscience. But he, uh, he put himself in that position and uh, luckily and thankfully he didn't do anything. He, 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 his intentions was just to try and meet somebody else. And then the authorities stepped in, mm. of course. But Peter, as a former police officer, how does this make you feel when you hear Brendan's story? I commend Brendan for his work. There is clearly a need for these people who are trawling the internet with a view to having sex with underage children. There is a need for them to be caught. Now, if the police do not have sufficient resources to be able to tackle this, this crime wave, then I don't blame people who go online, set themselves up under false profiles and try to ensnare these people themselves. You know, you're saying something similar to Jim Gamble, who's the former director of the National Child Exploitation and Online Protection Agency, CRP, he said he's called for vigilantes to be brought in from the coal to form, if you like, a volunteer army of digital detectives. But they're not police officers, are they? And as we heard with Brendan there, they can very quickly get out of their depth. I think that's a great idea of Jim Gamble's. You know, there is a precedent for members of the public being brought in to help the police with their inquiries, and that's called special constables. And there's a vast army of special constables up and down the country who don their uniforms, volunteers every week, and go out and do their bit for society. There is a precedent. The other downside to this kind of activity, though, uh, Brendan, is that some people are being accused of being paedophiles when they're not, and they are then so distraught they're taking their own lives. That's happened at least a couple of times. Yeah, that... I, I think that's just down to the whole operational side of the person who's doing it. We as a group, our group, uh, we don't operate like that. We would never, ever expose anybody without, one, them pleading guilty or being found guilty in a court of law. So, therefore, Peter Mitchell and the gentleman beforehand, we waited until they stood up in front of a magistrate and said, I'm guilty. And we then, then we can, we can actually say, you know, this is what's happened. This is the end justifying the means, though, isn't it? I mean, what if something went wrong before it ever got to court? The, that, that is, that is the, the, the problem we do have, and this is why Jim, Gamble, uh, Jim Gamble's really correct in saying, you know, let's bring Ian out of the cold. So you, you'd sign yeah, up to that, would you? Of course, yeah. Why, why wouldn't why would want to protect uh, my children and somebody else? I'd, but he, need, he was right in saying we need just to be tweaked and trained a little bit more. Let's just very quickly talk about your motivation for doing this in the first place. Yep. You're a father, you're yep. also a teaching assistant, so you yep. work with children and have yep. children of your own. Mm. And it was your own daughter being groomed online, although she, is, she was 17 at the yeah, time, she so she was over the age of consent, but even so, she was groomed. Yeah, and because there was nothing the police could do, uh, as a father, you know, I, I felt I let her down as well, but, you know, we're, we're a good, strong family unit, was able to talk about it and... Uh, you know, see, she's seen the error of her ways and she's actively took part in helping us uh, catch uh, the John Marples and Peter Mitchell. So. And there are more to come? There, there is a lot more, yeah. Peter, final word to you, because frustrated parents whose children have perhaps skirted close to this kind of thing will want to take matters into their own hands, perhaps, when they hear what Brendan's been capable of. Yes, they will, and, of course, Brendan and others are doing exactly that. 
let's tackle the problem, let's bring these people in from the cult, so to speak, get them on side with the police, then move forward and do all they possibly can to try and stop this scourge. But just finally, you're not condoning out-and-out -out vigilantism? No, of course not. I don't believe in people taking the law into their own hands. But look at the restraint that Brendan has shown. He's only ever publicised names after there's been a conviction. He's shown great restraint, and I commend him once again for the sterling work that he's doing.